the gospel is the news about what Jesus did for us by virtue of his death, his burial, and his resurrection. God, God needs you to make moves in nations, in families. Because that's what the word says. Not, we are not the ones saying it. It's the word. Anyone who believes in him will receive remission of sin. Sound teaching with the man of God, Apostle Johnsburg. What are talking about? Is he about himself or about another man? And amazingly, the part he was reading was prophecy about Jesus, about the death of Jesus. And then the Bible said, Philip seized the opportunity and began at that verse and started preaching Christ to him. So that's that no matter how good a man is, he needs to hear the gospel to be saved. I even gave you an example that when we were in primary school and churches, usually they chose the quiet people and made them chaplain. In most schools, they will choose the guy who is the, the guy who is modest. He who is modest enough, and they say this guy is the chaplain. He say, oh, no, yeah. so, but it will shock you that that is not what God looks at. That is not what God looks at. So the, the rowdy guys like myself, we they no, no, no. Even if you even go for it, I want to be chaplain. They say no. <laughs> they say no, 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 no. You can't. You are too rowdy. You are too giddy, giddy. No, ruffian. <laughs> That's what they say. But that is not what God looks at. No matter how good a man is. So character is not, or appearance is not the message. No matter how good you think a man is, you must hear the gospel, you must believe the gospel to be saved. Nothing else. So I, I said, and in, which is a fact, there are, there are some unbelievers who are well behaved than some Christians. That's a fact. There are some unbelievers. They don't do some things, some Christians do. Some Christians don't know how to talk. But there are some unbelievers. Any small thing they say, please, please. They are very courteous and all that. But courtesy is not salvation. So it's a good thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's a good thing. But when it comes to salvation, you ought to hear the gospel. And you ought to believe the gospel. Now let's go to another point. So this is what we've been doing so far. You can listen to the rest on our YouTube page. Yeah, we have the full messages there. So let's continue. We are still on the ABCs of the gospel of Christ. So the next point we are looking at is Jesus Christ is the central theme of the gospel. Jesus Christ is the central theme of the gospel. Jesus Christ is the central theme of the gospel. Jesus Christ is the central theme of the gospel. Jesus Christ is the central theme of the gospel. Now, by this, what what I mean by this is that the the the, the main focus, the main message of the gospel is Jesus. There's no other message. The main message of the gospel is not dressing or wig or makeup. In in any case, you know that makeup is brown powder. You know that makeup is brown powder. And we have the white powder. And then somebody gets angry and says, Oh, you don't use the brown powder, but they are using the white. And in any case, the Bible the Bible assures us that this your body will not enter heaven. The Bible says, at the appearing of Jesus will be changed. So, no matter how best you treat this, your body is not going there. Lie, lie. <laughs> it won't go there. It won't go there. Lie, lie. The central theme, you know, at first, or even some are still doing it. I thank God that, by God's grace, gradually, I've been taking from that class. But there are many people stuck in that place. In that, they are teaching, they are teaching many things it's like it's like a subject they just come they say ah how to how to how to do this how to do this i want to go there seven ways to do this nine ways to do that now that but the central theme of the gospel is jesus the gospel is about jesus christ him and him alone on on friday i was talking to you about knowing him when we know him we know us when you know him you know you you can't you, you don't you don't know yourself well enough you don't know yourself well enough 
they are there are many people because they don't have money now they think they are okay get money and see you see that say you were greedy say greed was in your heart but because the occasion hadn't come you were not seeing it you were not seeing it have have a lot of money now your character will be tested have a lot of money have the car you want cars you want you will see say you can really fornicate <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there are people like that. Ah, as it's raining, as it's raining now. You know when you have a car, nowhere is far. Nowhere is far. If they say, I, I live at BB anytime I'm coming. He say, got ya. Got ya. <laughs> BB anytime I'm coming. Got ya. And you put the exclamation mark there. <laughs> you are there it's raining you, you say oh that's why they made a wiper <laughs> you just turn it to the highest and you just and you're going and as, as, as you are going you are praying the, anyone cross you don't want to allow them so you are thinking oh, no 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 because the lady said i'm, I'm home alone jesus <laughs> so now back to what i'm saying the central theme of the gospel is about jesus not any man not anything we do the message the message god has for the whole world is jesus look at hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 the bible said god who has sundry times spoke by the prophet has in this last day spoken to us by his son whom he has appointed the lawful order of all things so it means that in this last days what god is saying is jesus that all men know christ that all men hear christ that all men believe Christ. And what he has committed to our trust is that we preach Christ. Look, God who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophet, verse 2, has in these last days, do you reckon that we are in the last days? Do you agree that we are in the last days? Then agree, the scripture, agree with what the Bible says. It says, has in these last days Spoken to us by his son. It means the message, the, the message of God for the world is Jesus. The message for, for the whole world is Jesus. The, the central point of the message. Our point. That's why in, 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 in Ephesians it says Jesus should have the preeminence. This is what the Father likes. That Jesus will have the, the best place. Jesus will be exalted amongst all. That his deity, his personality will be seen by all. He has in this last day spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he made the world. So it, what the father is saying in this last day is Jesus. Let's, let's look at Colossians chapter 1 verse 24. Colossians chapter 1 verse 24 When I got born again at, at first And I was now finding my feet Fresh, fresh, fresh You know we just We didn't learn anything We didn't learn much We just go out and then Most of the time What you even hear all they saying Is what you go and say You just go out and then You are dash you This is what many are they, are they are just having the zeal But they don't have the knowledge To back it They just go with the zeal they, hey ya, hey ya, hey ya, hey ya, And they just hit the street Recently, I, 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 I saw a post by another man of God. He said, Some were called, some were sent, others bought microphones and went. <laughs> others just went to the shop, they could afford it. They just bought the microphone and then you went to the roadside. This is why there's a lot of confusion in the system. On Friday, you see, I made a, I made a solid point to you that no matter how you think, ah, Father, I want to make others know you. Oh God, this is the burden of my heart. Oh God, this is the yearning. Oh, there were times you would do something, and then you say, you say, God, God, if this thing, if this thing goes through, I'll worship you. I'll let others know you. Oh God, that's what some people do. God, if you give me this job, if you give me this job, I'll let others know you. If you give me this, if you give me this, this guy, I'll, I'll let others know.
what they probably don't know what the message is about. Some are just speaking like a already environmental thing. So somebody picks a point and says, you see, a point is two-sided. So God is two-sided. And somebody gets up and says, Ah, it's revelation. You and that guy, we should be lashing you. We should be lashing both of you. This is why many people are confused because they don't know. Ah, when I come to church, apostle says A. Hey. When I go to the street, this guy is saying A. Hey. But they are all mentioning Jesus. Who should I believe? You see, the fact that they are mentioning the name of Jesus does not mean that he is being preached. Get that. This is what I've been trying to teach you all these years. So that anywhere you go, anywhere you go, you can decipher between Jesus being preached and Jesus just being mentioned. Because that's what happens most of the time. The guy just shares anything in his way and when they are saying the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And then of course you see manifestation, so you think but manifest that is good, but that's not the, the real thing. The real thing God wants men to know is Jesus. This one will last. This God's message, it can't be changed. Last week we saw that it is God's method. It's better than the best plan of man. You were in church. He says, I now rejoice in my sufferings for you. Paul is telling the church in Colossae. I now rejoice in my sufferings for you. And feel lack in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ. For the sake of his body, which is the church, he was now suffering. The guy was a prison minister. Somebody says, I, I want to be like Paul. Me, God has not told me that. Yeah, somebody says, and I will be like, oh, of course, he has told us persecution always us. But it doesn't mean that I will be there for anyone to beat me. That, no, no, I saw a video, they were, beat, they were slapping a guy. He was preaching, somebody came and said, who named that man? I'm like, this, this, this person should try it. This person should try it to me. This person should try it to me. It's going to be amazing. He will be shocked. He will be shocked. It's that. I'm preaching and a guy just comes and says, Who named the hey. it Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe things will, will happen. <laughs> anyway, hey, man of God, we're a boxer. No, please. I'm just saying something. He says, I now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church. Verse 25, please. Of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God, which was given to me for you, to fulfill the word of God. Verse 26. The mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. What mystery is that? Jesus is, Jesus is the mystery of God. So, now, now that he came to the world, Jesus is God demystified. Jesus is God unveiled. At first, men didn't know God. Men just knew glimpses about God. When you read the prophets, Moses and Co., you just find shadows. You find shadows about God. But Jesus came as a full representation. Jesus, Jesus is God's perfect man. And man's perfect God. Jesus came to represent the Father fully. 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 M men may misrepresent him, but he, he represented himself well in Christ. He says, the mystery which has been hidden from the ages, the mystery of God is Jesus Christ. From the ages and from generations. So there were generations and ages that didn't know this. He says, but now has been revealed to his saints I have verse 27 please to them God wills to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles which is Christ in you the hope of glory the mystery is Christ and Christ in you it is the hope of glory God's coded message all throughout the generations was Christ. All throughout the generations was Christ. The message from God for the world is Jesus. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. 
Like one day I told you in church, if you are to take, let's say, let's say you are in heaven, let's say you have gone to heaven, for example, if you are to take a photograph of God, you will see Jesus. If you are to take a stamp of God, like we have a stamp in the office, when you come, you say, Pastor, can you stamp this document for me? When I stamp, you see, Shepherd's Love Worldwide, Pastor. But when you take a stamp from God, it's Jesus. Because the Bible says he's the oh, perfect imprint. Now, in this age, he's the mystery of God, which was hidden from the ages, but has now been made known. So it means that it's not a secret again. You see, this is why he tells us to go out and preach it. Because it's not something we keep to ourselves. When you keep it, it becomes a secret. You, oh, don't tell anyone, okay? Don't tell anyone. You don't tell anyone Jesus is Lord. You don't tell anyone. Next verse, please, 28. Him we preach. You see, so the message is who? The message is about what? Him, not me. Not you. The message is him. It says, him we preach. We preach Jesus. Warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom. So our preaching is about him. Because he is the message. On Friday I told you, when we know him, we know ourselves. When we know him, you see, the more you know Christ, the more you know you. Knowing him, knowing you. Knowing him, knowing you. Knowing him, knowing you. It can't be about us and him. It's about him. You see, when we find him, we find us in him. We find us in him. L- let me give an example. Let's say that, you know, our parents, some of them have Bibles with a zip. They have their Bible, you can zip it. Let's say that she was reading, let's say she was reading and then she fell asleep. She put a pen in the middle and she zipped it. Right? The, in, everything you now see is just the Bible. But when you open the zip, you now see the book and you find the pen inside. We are in him. When we find him, we find us. That's how it is. When, when, we, when, we, when we find him, we find us. When, when you find Jesus, you find yourself. So he's a message. He says, him we preach. Him we preach. Him we preach. So preaching is not... Preaching is not that. I assume that, let's say, I saw Sir Louis, and, I, and maybe, or I saw one, one guy, one guy has been going to the nightclub, and I don't like it. And it's wrong. He has been going to the nightclub. I want him to stop going to the nightclub. Then I come and I say that, hey, guy, this nightclub you are going to, one day you are going to get an accident. In my zeal for him to be, what, saved, I say, this, this nightclub, you will get an accident and you will die. And you will now come and say, hey, please, please, that's if you will believe. He say, hey, please, then, 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 please, I want to stop. Sooner or later, you will see that he will go back. Let me give you an example. People were free to wear and they took their phones and deleted all their music. They deleted, because the message was, hey, if you don't, hey, hey, and your heart. That's not true repentance. Though. And then that moment they took their phone and then whatever they had on their phones, they deleted it. Some, some, some who had girlfriends and, and, and side chicks and all that, and uh, all that stuff, some were engaged, they just took the number, or they called the person and said, please, let's stop. Please don't call me again. And they deleted everything. Then two weeks later, they went back and said, please don't delete me from your life. Please. <laughs> please, I'm very sorry. If it's a music, they now go back to Ghana, something.com. When they are playing the song you hear, or 2 BD. They now go and download everything again. They now, as they are downloading, they are playing in their Bluetooth speaker and they are giving them my leg. Inofi to descend. <laughs> and the song that has come now, the, the, oh. Lo, lo, lo. Everywhere you pass, you hear it. Oh, lo, lo, lo. Oh, lo, lo, lo. Oh, lo, lo, lo. Oh, what's happening? A year or two ago, everywhere you pass, you just hear, Rockstar, where the party day today? What's happening? I told you in church that 
when when Ebony died, there were these people living behind our house, and every day they were playing her song. Every single day, every you hear boom, 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 boom. boom. I hate you so much right now. I, now I I heard the song so many times. Now I was in like I was alone. Sometimes I'm even trying to pray or I'm trying to read my Bible and I'm hearing I hate you so much right now. I hate you so much right now. I, it tells you that everything that enters you registers in your heart. Everything. Hey, man is large, you brothers, sisters. Man is large. If if Jesus could meet a man in Gadara, there was a mad man. He was very violent. He was he was now People, because he was violent, he left people and was now living in the rocks, alone by himself. The Bible said he could be cutting himself with stones. Because he was so violent, so nobody could live with him. He was alone. When Jesus came to Gadara, the demons in him pushed him. The, the man came and said, he said, they said, the demons cried out, what are you doing here? Jesus, what are you doing here? Then he asked, who are you? He said, we are many. We are legion. And a legend is about 5,000 demons. 5,000 demons in one person. It tells you man is large. So never write anybody off. Never write anybody off. Man is large. The things man can contain. If God could create even natural man and give him dominion, how about the spirit man? Man is large. Man is so large. Anyway, so back to this. Him we preach. So our preaching should be about who? Him. Our preaching should be Him. Not plenty things and Him. No. Just Him. We can't give the stage to something else. There, there are times when something will just happen. Let's say you see the rain. How it's raining lately. Somebody can form a message with it. That, that was, that's what happens. They just come and they take the rain and they say, You see how it's raining? You see how it's raining now? That's why, that's, then they say, that's how heaven and hell it will rain. Then, then you have people sitting down saying, hey, hey. These ones have not given their hearts to the truth. They are just going in circles. But it's about him. The preaching is about him. The teaching, you see, it says, him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man, all in him. It's about him. It's about Jesus. It's about Jesus. You know when when June third disaster happened, and then later some years later there was what the gas explosion at um, atomic. You know the next day it was all around like the next people use it as message. Or oh, are you not in Ghana? When something happens, people just go and they don't have a message. Just go and say ah, you see the 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 June third. Beloved, beloved, beloved. That, that's the route many people take. Many people take. That's the route many people take. Beloved, you see that? You see the fire, the fire was, was killing a lot of people. Hey! Like I always tell people that when we come to church and you say we should thank God because we are not in the hospital, that's not enough reason. One day, one day, one day, you may have your relative in the hospital. And, and they will come and say, let's thank God. <laughs> we are not, the, the reason we should thank God is not because we are not in the hospital. Oh, hey, others died of COVID. We didn't, that's, that's too small. That's too small. That's too small. Go to the scriptures and check why we should thank you. So back to this. Him we preach. Our preaching is about him. Let's come to First Timothy chapter two, verse one to verse seven. First Timothy chapter two, verse one to verse seven. First Timothy chapter two, verse one to verse seven. Okay. Therefore, I exhort first of all that supplication, prayer intercession and giving of thanks be made for all men verse 2 for kings and for those for kings and all who, who are in authority 
that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. Verse 3, please. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Did you, did, you, did you see this verse well? For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Who is God? Who is the Savior you know? <laughs> Who is Jesus? Jesus is God. We will get to heaven and see it, that Jesus is God. Jesus is, the, Jesus is the one who has been on the throne since. You see, in redemption, he came as Jesus. In redemption. Let, let me tell you something before we come here. Do you know that, you know that aside his supernatural birth, because we know that Adam sinned and all men became sinners. Even David, the man after God's own heart, said in Psalm 51, he said, In sin did my mother conceive me. Right? In sin. The man after God's own heart was in sin. <laughs> he was born in sin. That was, that was what plagued the entire human race. This is why every man must be born again. This is what plagued the entire human race. And now, the first prophecy God gave in the garden was this. After man sinned, God came and said, He said, He said to the woman, He said, Your seed will bruise the serpent's head. Do you remember? He said, Your seed. But a woman doesn't have seed. A woman has an egg. It is man, a man who gives the woman seed. So when a woman is pregnant, he says she has taken seed. See, because she doesn't have seed. She has egg. Now, aside the fact that Jesus had to come by supernatural birth, because if Mary and Joseph had had sex, right, to, to conceive, he would still be a sin in their womb because that, that's the truth everybody that's born is born into sin so if mary and joseph did the natural thing it means that the child will be contaminated that is why a holy seed had to come into mary so that he can be the savior for all of us so that he didn't have any sin peter says there was no girl in his mouth john says in him there was no sin peter says he never sinned paul says he never sinned so that he can be the perfect one. Like he is the perfect one. And he's our savior. Now that's that's the first part of the truth. That okay, he's supernatural birth. But there's something again about his supernatural birth, which I've been thinking on. And this is it. A woman doesn't have a seed. Why did God say the woman's seed will bruise the serpent's head? Let you can put it there. woman doesn't have to buy. God said the woman did. You can, you can find it in Genesis. I think Genesis 3 also. Let me come to this. We are heralding Christ. God wants all men to know Christ. What is happening is that many have become showmen. They want to share the glory with him. <laughs> so as he's preaching Christ, he will preach himself small. He will now take Jesus and say, oh me too, I'm there. Oh, me. <laughs> he doesn't want Jesus to have the best place. He wants to share it with him. So you come to church and, and I'll, I'll be behaving like I'm a superstar. I come and say, yeah. Everybody, morning. Yes, so I'm mommy to me. So who nima? Who di ameyo? Me kasati awa u. Oh, it's about Jesus. Jesus, Jesus has the chief and the best place. Look at this. And I'll put. So God was talking to the snake, the serpent. He says. And I'll put enmity between you and the woman. And between your seed and her seed. So look at this seed. This seed is big. Her seed. The S is big. This one is small. You see? And that's Jesus. And he says, he shall, the seed, oh, you know, because there's a semicolon. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his, his heel. <laughs> God prophesied the coming of Jesus even in the garden. So what Judas went to do didn't shock him. Because it was written in the ages. It was written in the ages that Jesus should come. It was written. This was God's plan to save all men. Now, think on this. A woman doesn't have seed. This is scientifically proven. No woman can give birth of herself. She has, God has given her something called an egg. So every month she goes to a cycle. She goes to a cycle. If nothing has entered, it has to go out. 
and then it will come back again every month every month then the man has the seed but here we are they said the woman's seed it means God had planned Jesus coming okay now look at this at conception right at conception if a woman is pregnant who gives the baby blood at conception where does the baby get the blood for Okay, if you are pregnant now, how would the baby get blood? From the, is there what? Placenta? No, the, the placenta just gives food and takes waste. One day we'll have doctors in church. When I talk, I'll say, <laughs> come and show it. <laughs> one day, one day, 15 years from now, when I'm preaching, there'll be doctors in front. I say, ah, I say, yeah, come and. Now, listen, listen, listen. But this is the truth. You, you can Put it somewhere. You see, there's something in the woman called placenta. When 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 she when she when she conceived, right? That's a connection between the baby and the woman. What happens is that the baby receives food from the woman, right? Through the placenta. So the placenta supplies food. Just like Jesus says, "I'm the vine, you are the branches." You get you you get the same life, the same strength, the same nourishment. You get it. Huh? Now, so you, you you the baby receives food through the placenta and the waste from the baby you know it has not come out it cannot produce waste like you you can walk and say oh I, i'm sweating then sweat sweat will come out i want to i want to use the washroom then i'll go the baby the cat doesn't do any of that so what happens is that god has designed the body such so that the woman supplies food to the baby through the placenta and takes waste from the baby through the placenta you get it so until the baby is born so how does a baby get blood? Who supplies blood to the baby? The woman. No. Listen. The woman doesn't give the baby blood. If the woman gives the baby blood, it means that the blood of Jesus can't cleanse anything. It means he would have taken filthy blood. That is why he said her, her seed. She doesn't have seed. Remember, she has eggs. Am I saying things too hard for you to understand or what? Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me well. Listen to what I'm saying. It's an interesting thing we are discussing. I'm saying that, uh, you see, God has created male and female. And God, with a male, God has given him something called seed, sperm. That's what we call seed, sperm. Then we have the woman. The woman doesn't have a sperm or seed. Same what is called seed is spent. Woman doesn't have it. Woman has an egg. So so to give birth you need the man's sperm to meet the woman's what egg. Then a baby is formed. Do you get it? Now when the baby is formed, I said there's a link between the baby and the mother. It's called the placenta. What happens is that the, the baby collects food from the mother for its nourishment through the placenta. And the baby gives waste out through the placenta. You get it. And I'm asking you that, well, how does the baby get blood? From the seed. From the seed. It is your father that gives you blood. Your blood is from your father. Go and check that. Uh, go and check. Your blood is from your father. That's why they do the your blood is from your father. Your, your, the blood you have is from your father. <laughs> the blood you have is from your father. But in the case of Mary, in the case of Mary, Mary didn't have sex. So she even was shocked. She said, I don't know any man. Do you get it? I don't know any man. How can this thing be? She was a virgin about to be married. And the Bible even said, when Joseph found out, he wanted to, to leave her secretly and go you know and then and then in a in a dream the angel of god appeared and said it's a holy child rather herod wants to kill all children take him and run to egypt do you get it so how does a baby in the womb get blood it gets blood from the the, the father from the seed from the sperm if if you are saying from the woman from if it's from the woman it means jesus is an unholy child and therefore his blood cannot be used for cleansing. 
though the seed of God, the sperm of God, that's why he said her seed, which is unusual. Woman doesn't have seed. But here we are reading that a woman's seed. When he talks about seed, is a man. So he says we are Abraham's seed. Do you read that you are the seed of Ruth? Or, or Hagar? <laughs> it's man. A bear made. A bear made. It's okay as a child. King Godson is his seed. Is his seed. <laughs> is his seed. Is it? God knows the biological process. Like everything on Everything. So it means that it means that to give birth to Jesus, the sperm of God entered Mary. You know, she asked, How how can these things be? And Angel Gabriel said what? The Holy Spirit will overshadow you. That, so the sperm of God entered Mary. So the, the blood Jesus was using of the earth was, was from God. <laughs> this is why his blood is, is very potent, very effective for cleansing anything. Because all men had sinful blood. This is why, listen, Jesus, Jesus was not born in the flesh. Jesus came into the flesh. So he was God yet man. He is God and both man. He is a God man. <laughs> he's Godhood and his manhood. He is a man. He can feel what we feel, but he's God. He understands what it being, what, what it is like to be a man. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So when you think of this, you say, Ah, Jesus, a woman's seed. When a woman only has an egg. It means that ah, it was it was written long time that this should happen. This should happen. So the sperm of God entered Mary. Entered Mary. And because blood is from the, the sperm donor, it means that Jesus was walking the earth not with the blood everybody has. He had the blood of God in him running through his veins. So this blood is well potent, can cleanse anything very powerful. Very powerful. Very, this is why the blood of Jesus is potent. This is why. If blood was from the mother, it means that still uh, the process God wanted to avoid and didn't use Joseph, he has still fallen in it. You see, God wanted to avoid that same nature. That's why he didn't allow Joseph to have sex with Mary. Right? If God has bypassed that first step, why would he still make sure that the blood will come from the woman again to the child? It would have been any of our come out. Joseph Nini yet frequent. Do you get it? Eh, so that's it. So one thing you give birth is your blood, it is your blood your baby has. <laughs> are you are you okay with this? So it tells you the blood of Jesus is very efficient. Very efficient. Very effective. Very effective very effective. This is, why we, this is why we can be sure that his blood did the perfect work. We are cleansed fully by his blood. This is, this is why we can believe that, oh, really? Really? In Acts 13, Paul says, through this man he preached the forgiveness of sin. And by him, all that believe are cleansed by him. Through the you can proudly say it. So we, our preaching is about him. What verse were we looking at? First Timothy chapter two. Uh -huh, let's let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. You see, sometimes you can think on the mystery of Christ and you be like, "Oh, thank God, Jesus." When when you look at the scriptures, far truly, truly, like Anopale, Anopale, you see that oh, God loves us so much that He put Jesus on the line for us. Jesus. Jesus on the line. Jesus on the line. One day they said, your mother is looking for a seed, my mother. <laughs> the seed. <laughs> it is from the sperm of God. <laughs> well, you see, this is why he could one day tell them. You remember in John, John 8, he said, Abraham rejoiced when he saw my day. Because he knew where he was from. He knew where he was from. He knew that he, he came as a man, but he was God. This, Jesus is God. Isn't he? In redemption, he is the savior on a rescue mission. He came as a savior. Moses couldn't save. 
Elijah couldn't say. We needed a perfect man. And God himself came down. Were you not in church? You read the scripture. It said, great is the mystery of godliness. God was revealed in the flesh. It means, tell it. I told you that. I told you. When Jesus rose and then Thomas was saying, oh, me, I don't believe it. Oh, me, the disciples said, hey, Thomas, we have seen him. He said, oh, me, I'm I'm my shot, I'm my I'm my then he said, unless I feel his wounds, I touch his side. When the Lord appeared, he said, come and feel it. The Bible said he went to him and touched. Do you know that Thomas spoke Hebrew, not English. He spoke Hebrew. And in Hebrew, what he said was, Elohim, Yahweh. This is for God. My Lord and my God. That's what he said. He said, my Lord and my God. He knelt down. He said, my Lord and my He knew instantly that, Akwani <laughs> knew that hey Nyamini he said my Lord he, he spoke Hebrew it was just translated to us in English Elohim Yahweh Elohim is for God alone Yahweh is for God alone nobody if Jesus was in God you'd have said him hey, why what blasphemy is this hey minye, minye. he fell at his feet and worshipped him only God can be worshipped you can't worship man if Jesus was, was not God you'd have said hey, why are you worshipping me because in the in Revelation they were trying to John was trying to worship the angels. He said, "Don't worship me! Don't worship me!" Only God, Jesus Himself, even said it to, to Lucifer on the mountain. He said, "Thou shalt serve your Lord, your God, and Him alone shall you worship." Jesus is God. Jesus is God. Jesus is God. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of. Our Savior. <laughs> the Savior is God Himself. <laughs> How can this salvation fail when it is God Himself doing the saving? This is why I said that. It doesn't salvation is not any bundle, it's not bundle you buy on your phone. Every month you buy another five CDs. Every month you buy another. Jesus died once and for all. He doesn't die every Easter. He said, hey, yes, 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 Jesus will die again next year, Good Friday, who told you? That's religion. That one is man-made. It's man who thinks, oh, he will be dying every... But the scriptures here, he has been crucified. What is happening now is that everybody must believe it. Everybody must believe it. You must believe that Jesus came and died. And that he rose again. God our Savior. God is the Savior. Uh-huh. Who wants all men? Verse 4. Who desires all men? Who desires? What is God's desire? That all saved. He wants all men saved. No man is so bad for salvation. No man is it. This guy, the, 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 the blood of Jesus can't claim what he does. This guy there is rotten. This guy is not part of those who should be saved. One day somebody came to me and said, Man of God, heaven there is a And I said, Oh, why? He said, Because the kind of things I do, heaven there is a lot of things I do. I said, Oh, why? He said, Because the kind of things I do, heaven there is a lot of things Who desires all men? To be saved, uh huh, and to come to the knowledge of the truth. So God wants what all men saved. This is God's desire: all men should be saved. This is why we preach the gospel to our friends, to our relatives, to everybody in our world, because that is the Father's desire that all men be saved. Verse five, please, and that they come to the knowledge of the truth. Look at verse five: for there is one God and one between God and men the man Christ Jesus <laughs> there is one God and one mediator between God and men the man Christ Jesus you see he came he is God yet man so he put himself okay I, I'll be the link between myself and men <laughs> Jesus is the God man I said, there's something called, you, you have a smartphone. You see, in our time, and we live in a time of knowledge. Oh. In the days of the apostles, you have to go and beg to collect the scroll. Some of us, our parents didn't have enough information. 
So you will you will be in a sorry state if you are not if you don't have enough info. If you are not researching, if you are not researching. You are just there. You know, mm, I'm just continuing in the tradition of my father. You don't want to research. You don't want to research. There's something called the hypostatic union. Hypostatic union. Hypostatic union. It means that it means that God is Jesus Christ is both God, is both man. It doesn't make sense. He's both God and he's both man. He's a God man. That's what he's saying. There is one God and one mediator. There is one God and one middle man. A mediator is a middle man. Two people are not on good terms. Two people are not on good terms, and then one person comes and then he tries to make peace between them. Right? And he says, and he's the man. The man Jesus Christ. The man. You see, his, his man Christ is different from the normal man. It's capital M. <laughs> The man Jesus Christ. The man Christ Jesus. Verse 6. Who gave himself? The man Christ Jesus who did what? He gave himself a ransom for all. He gave himself a ransom. When they say ransom, usually you watch your Nigerian movie and you see it. They have caught Igechuku. Some robbers have, have caught Igechuku. And then they call the father. Or the, the father is Baba, Baba Tunde. And then they say, Hello, your son Igechuku is here. We want two million naira, or you won't see him. And then the father is some, some politician. So you now say, Okay, where do I bring it? They say, Bring it to 43 Baba Lola Street. When you come, just drop the money and go. Any mistake, and you, you'll be sorry. I've acted the movie in, in one minute. <laughs> now I'll look for other things to bring in, other things to, to make it two hours. <laughs> now, so this thing happens and then maybe Baba, Baba Lola will get police and the police will go with him but they will hide somewhere. The two million naira they are demanding is called a ransom. So in exchange for his liberty, in exchange for his life, they are taking that, right? But with what man was in man needed a ransom not of money not of money not of gold not of anything jesus gave himself a ransom so our ransom is jesus you see, this is why you should know that this thing we have believed in it cannot change because the man gave him it was a perfect offering he gave which was himself if we failed because then he didn't give a good offering but the ransom was well, it, it was more than. He gave himself a ransom for all. For how many people? Jesus didn't die for Christians. He died for the whole world. It's when you, when you get born again, you become a Christian. It's not, it's not like, oh, he came and said, Christians, ICGC, Methodist, I'm going to die for you, okay? Bye-bye. No, he died for the whole world. The whole world. Anyone that believes in his death, his burial, his resurrection, becomes a believer, becomes a Christian. Look, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time? To testify means what? To preach. To be preached in due time. To be preached. So our preaching is about him. We are testifying about him. We are testifying about him. What I'm doing, I'm testifying about him to you. To be testified in due time. The message of God is Jesus. You can see it. He gave himself a ransom for us to be testified. In, it means to be testified at the appropriate time. And this is the time. This is the time. This is the time. And we are preaching him. We are going for soul winning here. We are going for this year in your workplace when there's break time you can push the gospel to some of your friends some of your colleagues you say hey are you born again they are just they're just at the workplace all they are talking about is soccer they can say ah you do see ronaldo did you see this then they say chale some party be day the back there hey, chale. and they are doing silver chain <laughs> silver chain you can push 
Some of you, you think, you, you assume that your parents are saved. <laughs> it will shock you. <laughs> you, are, you are assuming that your parents are saved. Or your, your brothers are saved. Because, oh, sir, sir, yes, son, now so far, sorry, you. You will be shocked that they have not believed. You will be shocked. They were just ironing their nice clothes and going. But really, their heart, they had not given their heart. In Proverbs 4, 4, he said, My son, let your heart retain my word. Let your heart retain it. Retain it. So, some can hear it, but they will not retain it. They will not give their heart. It has to be testified in due time. Okay, let, let, let's go to another verse, please. Let's read Matthew chapter 5, verse 39. Jesus was talking to the Pharisees. He says, You said the scriptures. Matthew chapter 5, verse 39. Matthew chapter 5, verse 39, please. Oh, I mean John chapter 5, verse 39. Sorry. John chapter 5. In, in heaven, it will be wonderful. When all the song is about the Lamb, we are singing to the Lamb. For what he, he did for us. We are just worshipping the lamb. Worshipping the lamb. John said, I saw a lamb. As though it had been slain. It looked so fresh. Yes, the sacrifice of Jesus is potent. Potent. Throughout the ages. He said, when I saw him, it looked like it, they just freshly slayed him. Very potent. There's no sin. No sin. The blood of Jesus cannot kill. No sin. Prophet TV Joshua will tell you that never, never a thing Jesus cannot do. Never a thing. Never a thing. Never a thing. Not my own, God's own. You search the scriptures. You know, every time he and the Pharisees, they were not clicking on Jesus and the Pharisees. The Pharisees will come with their robes and their, their capes on their head and all that. They come and say, oh, you cry, this small boy cry, you are worrying us. Oh. Ah! Then they come with their big books because they are well learned. And they are talking, they are talking. But what, what they didn't know was that everything about what they were priding themselves in was about this man. And he rather was looking a normal guy, they were saying, look at carpenter. But they, they were wearing clothes for it. They were wearing clothes for it. In our time, it happens. So you, see, you see some people, because they are wearing color, they, they are junior Jesus. And they wear the robe, they come and say, I'm sure if we lived in the generation of Jesus, we would have all looked down on him. That, because the Bible, Isaiah said, he, there was nothing lovely about him. That's what Isaiah prophesied. He said there was nothing, he didn't look like the Savior at all. Savior power and they gave birth to him in, in that place, in the manger. But the Pharisees were, had the best places, their, their chair was so far. <laughs> Their chair was so far. When they are sitting on their foot, a humidifier beside them. And it's just blowing there. <laughs> Do you get the point? Like, the man for whom the thing was about, he was mingling with everyone. He didn't look like it. He looked unassuming. Unassuming. So he was always arguing with them. They were also arguing with him. They thought, ah, this guy is so, this is so controversial. When you, when, if you preach the truth, they will see you like that too. Yeah. I'm sure there are people who think that, hey, Apostle John's back like, yeah. here. Ah. Some will say, oh, he the false, but he is controversial. Some will just write me off like that. Oh, he is controversial. Me, I know he's that guy. I know he's like him. <laughs> There are people who did that to Pastor Chris. They thought, ah, who is this? Oh, ah, what, what kind of preacher cry is this? He started with Jesus. And one day, look at what he told them. They were having their usual confrontations. And look at Jesus. You search the scriptures. For in them, that's in the scriptures, you think you have eternal life. And these are they. The scriptures are what? Which testify of me. So the, the scriptures are what? The scriptures testify of Jesus. 
So the, the, the message is about him, him. Him. When you open your Bible, you should be seeing Jesus on the pages of the book. You don't, you don't just go, give me your book. You don't just go and then say, you know, this is when we were kids. We used to open our Bible. You just go and say, Father, speak to me. Father, speak to me today. Today, I want to be a good boy. I want to be a good guy. I want to read the Bible. Then you just, you just open. When you open, you just read the verse and say, Oh, that's God's word to me. This time, by this time. Maybe I you do part, you see. You are still doing that. Then when, when someone meets, you say, Oh, how, how is it going? You say, I had my quiet time today. You didn't, you didn't have any quiet time. You didn't have any quiet time. You didn't have your quiet time. And that's why I'm explaining to you that the scriptures are a testimonial about Jesus. The scriptures testify about Jesus. You can put a modern verse, please. You search the scriptures. Look at this, the Living Bible. The Living Bible, TLB. You search the scriptures. For you believe they give you eternal life. You know the Pharisees thought when they read the scripture. You know how some people, some people are still doing that. They talk, when they memorize the scripture, yeah. And those times they could do recital. It was they recite the Torah. So they talk when they are reciting it. They are the big guys. And you have somebody who is trying to even memorize one verse. They can't get it. They just go and the and the sun and the sun. Oh. <laughs> And then there's another guy who has sealed the whole Leviticus. He just comes to stand there and says, Leviticus chapter 18, verse 1. Then he starts, bah, 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 and people are clapping. Men may be clapping for him, but it's all in his head, not in his heart. That's that what Jesus was telling the Pharisees. They thought, ah, by memorizing the scriptures, he had eternal life. Instead of getting the point of the scripture, that as you are reading it, will be pointing you to Jesus. Look. You search the scriptures, for you believe they give you eternal life. And the scriptures point to me. So, the scriptures are about Jesus. The scriptures point to Jesus. Look at verse 40. But, look at this. Yet, you won't come to me so that I can give you this life eternal. <laughs> Jesus and them, eh? <laughs> Jesus and them there, yeah, Charlie. Oh, I'm, I'm sure that some of them will, will see on that day that, ah, there all this while God lived with us and we were, we were arguing with him. Every day, look, when you are there, they are singing. They are singing, and can it be that I should get... The, the chorus they sing is what? It's just amazing love. How can it be that thou, my God, should... That's what happened. My God died for me. David, David said, he said, he said, he said, my God died. David prophesied about his God dying for him. His God. And somebody took, somebody sat down, meditated on the scriptures and said, mm, this is, that's the truth. It is, it is your God who has died for you. And he says, how can it be? How can it be? God died for me. And you want me to keep in this death? You want me to believe it doesn't work? You want me to say, oh, it's not, it's not okay until my next sin. Who told you? Every sin Jesus was paying for at the time of his death were future sins. Yeah, the Bible says he paid for all sins. <laughs> see, hey, Pastor, if you see them, they, they will go and sin and look to humble you. You have, not, you have not come to the point where his love breaks you down, you are weeping. Your love is running after me. What kind of love is this? You love me so much. One day I was listening to this song by Mercy Timo. Jesus, oh make an I worship you. That song. Oh. If you have good speakers and you turn on that song, you may end up weeping. You read the word, it says, Jesus, reflect. <laughs> and you are thinking, what, 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 kind of love, what kind of love is this? Love so amazing. While we were still sinners, he died for us. So, the scriptures are a testimonial. 
of Jesus. He says, you search the scriptures and think the scriptures, you know, the scriptures you know, they give you eternal life. But they point to me. He's the central theme of the scriptures. Jesus is the one the scriptures talk about. It's a story about him. One day he came, he said, it is written about me in the volume of the books. It's about him. It's about him. Remember, when you say, Pastor, so are we not important? When we find him, we will find us. Look at another scripture. I'll be closing soon. Look at another scripture. Where are we? Okay, Acts chapter 8, verse 1 to 5. Acts chapter 8, from verse 1 to verse 5. Let's read. And Saul was consenting to his death. So, what was happening here is that Stephen had died. They had stoned Stephen. Remember, brother Stephen. They stoned him. At that time, Paul hadn't got him yet. He was still Saul. So he was part of the killer. He said, and now Saul was consenting to his death. It means he agreed that they should kill him. When you say you consent, it means you agree. You give your approval. He approved the death of Stephen. Imagine what will happen. Now, when he saw Stephen in heaven, imagine how they will be living there now. Be like, hey, who are you coming? <laughs> yeah. Because they will, they will meet in heaven. You will be like, hey, guys. Yeah. Guys. Yeah. So if you, you make the, hey, the last stone, be the take it with the Last stone, no, they bomb me. I know the hair. I know the guy. You know, those times their stones were not these, our stones. Too. They stoned Stephen to death. Too. They still have war. Hey, the stones they use, those times, not a uh, rock. And they just give the guy back. You just say, hey, Tali. Hey, Paul. Tali. Hey, one of the crowd. Tali, I felt it. <laughs> you say, hey, Tali. Boy, the last one they gave me on my stomach, eh, I almost vomited. <laughs> they all met but at this time Paul had not changed he tells you that you see salvation is not man's sin it's not man's sin it's not man's sin at all because what kind of God is this somebody can do something now. Hey, there are many people who are into occultism man. one day you will see them preaching the gospel one day you will see them preaching the gospel for now they are doing dangerous things some of them they are going here they, it's, it's, it's like someone it's like it if man was God, you would have said, hey, you did not try. Stay there. You, after all these things you have done, you, somebody can another person into occultism for years and, and destroy many people and he, he turns to the Lord Jesus and he saves. <laughs> he turns to the Lord Jesus and he says, It doesn't make sense. That's why it is not human method. It's not human method. If God was man, this rain that is falling, God knows all the houses of sinners. He would have said, he would have seen rain falling on just one house and another house dry, another house. <laughs> and then he said, ah, hey, it's falling on only by it goes everywhere. He tells you, you see, until Jesus comes, he has given the chance to everybody because he wants all to be saved, remember. Now, when the time comes, you will not have an excuse that you didn't hear the gospel. Why didn't you believe that one? That one, then how you and him will balance that one? I will not be there to see it. I don't know if they are adding it, it's not adding up. Then you start doing your day working, you start using the thick pie to be three points. <laughs> <laughs> now, Saul was consenting to his death, so at this time, Paul hadn't changed. We are closing, we'll close with this point with one more verse and then close. Now Saul was consul, uh, consenting to his death. At the time, at that time, a great persecution arose against the church which was at Jerusalem. So at this time, the church was going through what? Persecution, the church at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria. So because of the persecution, they all ran. You know, Jesus has prophesied it long time that in that time, persecution is coming. When it comes, they should run to the hill. In Matthew 24, Jesus said they should run to the hill. <laughs> so they scattered. They scattered. People took over Jerusalem. Like vehemently. And one guy, I, I've told you about him before. 
one, one guy is called Antiochus Epiphany. Antiochus Epiphany, he was from Greece. He was, he was a, 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 an emperor from Greece. When he came, when they took over Jerusalem, do you know one of the things he did? He went to the holy place, the tabernacle, where only the high priest goes. And he doesn't just go alone, he goes with blood. He went and he slaughtered the pig on it. <laughs> he, it means he desecrated the temple. He desecrated, they took over things. Jerusalem, so Christ, Christians ran away. You even read about, if you have read about Hitler, the blood of the Jews flowed like a river. Yeah, there are many, many persecutions against Jerusalem. So at that time, at the early, early, early church time, why would you think Paul would sit down and say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel? It means that time, Charlie, it was not a small thing. Now you, you can't say, I'm not ashamed. I'm not. That time, that time a lot was going for you to get up and say, I'm not ashamed. It was boldness. I'm part of them. They will go and preach and then they call them and lash them. Yeah, they lash them. Look at this. So at this time, there was a persecution going on against the church. And they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. So the brethren all ran to other places. Verse 2. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial. So Stephen had been killed and people carried him and went to bury him. And made great lamentation over him. They were weeping. Oh Stephen! Oh Stephen! They went to bury him. Verse 3. As for Saul, he made her work of the church. This man later wrote the epistle. <laughs> I said, no man is beyond salvation. This man, look, he didn't, he didn't just do anything. He made havoc of the church. The very church later he now became part of. He tells you God is gracious and kind. God is gracious and kind. God is gracious and kind. God is not a Ghanaian God. When I was young, I used to think that God, God, was, God was for Ghanaians. Have you thought like that before? I used to think, there, there was this World Cup, 2006, Ghana versus Brazil. You know, those times there was no social media to discuss or anything, so we met in groups to discuss. And then, they lashed us. It was around 3 p.m. They lashed us, 3 nil. That day we said all the goals were off. All the goals. The referee changed Jesse with Ronaldo. Did you hear those stories? They said the referee and Ronaldo exchanged jerseys. And then, then, and this happened. And, this, and we're thinking, oh God, oh God. When they're about to play penalties, those times, who, Sami Aje will be in the pool and do this. <laughs> he will kneel down and just do this. God, God, God. <laughs> the, other, the other country we are playing against, you also be praying, God, God. So if you are God, who will you listen to? <laughs> Who will you listen to? Who will you listen to? And then we thought, hey, God is with us. The other nation, the God is not with them. Oh, oh, Naminti, the crew, and the What the say? Oh, most of Namin, come on. God is not a Ghanaian God. God is the the God of the universe, the God of all flesh. Now, so look at Saul. He made her work of the church. This guy, and later he is still chosen by God, and you don't want to believe that we are called by grace. We are saved by grace. Entering every house. Look at what he did. Entering every house and dragging off men and women, committing them to prison. He enters every house. Once there are Christians there, he doesn't say, please, go to. He drags you. And throws you there, and they lock the gate and say nonsense. I'm sorry, I'm African. I'm not And see, see, later on, he himself goes up preaching the same message, and even preaching deeper things than those people knew. And it's possible that at the time Paul was preaching in some regions, some people were still in prison, which he put them there. <laughs> God is gracious. God is not from your hometown. God is gracious. God is look. He was dragging them off. Men and women. It, he had no right, no respect for what women and no, no, no. They say, oh, women, oh, women and children. Oh, he just throws you there. 
My friend, go, go, go inside. You know what this means? It means they will use violence. Some of them will be lashing you. My friend, go. Go. He said, Rim. Me see, Rim. So, committing them to prison, verse 4. Therefore, those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. So people ran because of this. And they were preaching the word in wherever they were. Okay, continue, please. Those who ran everywhere preached the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. Philip went where? To Samaria and preached who? So the message is who? The message is about Christ. Remember the point we are dealing with. What's the point? Jesus Christ is the central theme of the gospel. Philip went and preached Christ to them. Let's let's look at Acts chapter 5. Let's read from verse 40. Acts chapter 5, verse 40 to 42. Acts 5, 40. And they agreed with him. At this time, what was happening here was that the disciples had been caught preaching Jesus. They had been caught preaching the gospel. Philip, eh, Peter, they caught Peter. And they lashed them. They brought them before the prison. And they, they, they were thinking, ah, why are you people talking about Jesus? We have killed him. Why are you still talking about this? You better shut up or we will do something worse to you. And the Bible said, these people also spoke. While they, the Bible said, they looked at how bold they were. They knew that mm, they had been with Jesus. Because they were just fishermen. But now some boldness had entered them. Now, before everything will end, there was one Pharisee there called Gamaliel. He was a scholar. He was called Gamaliel. And what happened was that Gamaliel stood up and spoke and said, Brothers and sisters, listen, we don't like them, and I also don't like them, but listen to me. What is happening is that we were here, and then Theodas came and said he's starting his church. And plenty of people followed him. And where is Theodas today? Other people have come, started their own churches, it did not work. So what I'm suggesting is that, though we don't like them, if it is from God, we can't do anything. But if it's of themselves, let's see if we go. Then the Bible said, well, they agreed. So this, this is why they said they agreed with him. You get it? So, and they agreed with him. That's Gamaliel. And when they had called for the apostles and beating them, they not just call and say, you Gamaliel said we should leave you if it's from God, it's stand. No, they beat them. They, beat <laughs> they didn't say, we have agreed, so you they still beat them. It means if they did not agree, they would have done something worse. Agree for his beating. And beating them, they commanded them that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. They told them, don't, don't talk about Jesus again. Do you hear me? Verse 41. So they departed from the presence of the council. It was a council. They brought them before people to come and explain Rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. They were happy that, oh, ah, they beat us. It should be told that the first day, I told you, the first day that Muslim man slapped me because I was preaching. I, there was joy in my heart. Though. I felt like, hey, me too. Me too, a day will come in my life, somebody will slap me. I, I'm not a thief. But he called me a thief. And it's normal. Nowadays, they want to say you're a pastor, they say you're a thief. Once you say, oh, pastor, oh, your pastor, oh, Akron, Fon, Kwan, Akron, Fon, Kwan. When they are having their weddings, they want pastors to come. Why don't you call your, your family ahead? When somebody is there, say, stop, I stop calling on him. If not, if not for pastors, eh, some people would have become arm robbers. Oh, it's true. Go to some churches and see. Go and see, build their pain. Of course, some are doing their own thing anyway. 
every vocation, there are people there. They are bad teachers too. Yeah. But we still went to school anyway. There are teachers we didn't like, but we still went to school. But here they say, oh, all of you, you are all teachers. You know, the guy has not given you money. You have not given me money before. <laughs> he said, I'm a teacher. How is that possible? But it's part of it. You just take it like that. So those who marry pastors know that you will be tired. If you and your husband, you say you are all teachers. When you wear a nice dress, you say, ah, you see, the money is so easy. <laughs> the money is so The money is so easy. But the ISHP, but the ISHP, it's amazing. But it's good, it's good, it's good. A day will come, we all see Jesus. When we see Jesus, some people will be weeping. Oh, oh, we missed it. So the disciples were happy. Oh, we suffer shame for your name. And I said, I have a personal experience like this. The guy, I said, I was going home. I was so happy. I felt fulfilled. Like I went to preach and somebody came and slapped me. Oh, normal. I just took it and went home. And 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 the, and and the most popular one. I'll keep saying. I went to preach. Somebody poured urine on me. One 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 rubber like this. They are kept it uh, two days or <laughs> the whole family. <laughs> the woman came out like this, poured it on my face, my dress. I was squeezing somebody's urine from my shirt. But as I was going, I was saying, Thank you, Jesus. I'm, I'm not an orphan. <laughs> I'm not an orphan. So sometimes you sit, you sit back and say, For what? For what? You're not an orphan. Then, of God who have relatives elsewhere, they can just say, I'm leaving Ghana, I'm going to stay abroad. Some can say they will not do anything again and they will not be hungry. There are people like that. Lady Robert, did they do that to your dad? Did they insult him that he's a thief? They do, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, crumb for, crumb for. <laughs> but it's like that. They did it to Jesus. They did it to Jesus, so you have to understand. You have to understand. The ladies who say, oh, well, hey, me, I want to marry a pastor. When, when they are coming, it's nice for me. When the pastors are coming to minister in Italy, when I see them, I, I look at the, the way some of them, the way they are captain and they are seen. Some of them, they dress nicely. And they are, they are one lady says, I want to marry a pastor because when I'm coming, they'll be doing mommy, mommy. <laughs> I, 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 M- mommy teeth. <laughs> Anyway, to the scripture. So they departed and they were happy that, oh, they were worthy to suffer shame for his name. Verse 42, please. And daily in the temple and in, and in every house, they did not see teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. They did not stop preaching and teaching Jesus. So well, that's what we ought to be doing. He's the message. The message is Jesus. The message is Jesus. They did not stop teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. A- another, another scripture and then we close. Now there was a contention in, in Philippi. Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1. Verse 15. There was a contention. Some people became envious that Apostle Paul was going around and he was gathering crowds. So they also said, let's also start preaching. They said that we can also... Some people have entered ministry because of showmanship. They want to be the showman. So that you two people can say, oh, yes sir, yes sir, yes sir, then yes. He doesn't understand anything. But that's why everybody is trying to be a teacher. Everybody is trying to teach. Everybody is trying to teach. Trying to teach. And some people want to be unique. They want to be different from everybody else. And in the quest to do that, they start saying things contrary to the truth. They start teaching things. Doctrine of devil. They, they, are, they are now teaching another gospel. Another gospel. They have moved the landmark. So, now, something was happening. This He says, some indeed preach Christ. Even from envy and strife, 
some are preaching Christ from the point of what? Envy. Okay, but understand, they are doing what? Preaching Christ. And some also from goodwill. Verse 16. The former preach Christ from selfish ambition. Not sincerely. Supposing to add affliction to my chain. So they were preaching so that they, mm, against Paul. They are, they are also joined the team so that they will be opposed to Paul. So that they can, they can follow him to drag the members. There are people like that. Like, a church is here, then there will be another church. Then we'll go and stand at the junction. Are you going to this church? Come here. <laughs> Some people do that. They are, they are not concerned about the work. They just want the numbers. They want the numbers. And then they say, Ah, oh, my name is Bishop. Bishop A.Y. A.Y. Katie. Yeah. I'm the bishop in charge of so and so and so church. We have 37,000 branches worldwide. But actually what they do is that they go to some... There was a church that came in Ghana and they were paying people to leave their church. Yeah. They were, they were paying people. They would come. They say, ah, hey, one day Christ embassy. One day in Christ embassy. The, the person was in Christ embassy. One day he took all the leaders. He took, hey, he took all the strong leaders, so the fellowship leaders, the, the senior cell leaders, he, because he had the money. He took everybody, people were following him. He said he was going to make you a branch pastor and then he will give you a car, give you a house. People followed. And then what was happening now is that if you, bring, if you bring one person to church, there is an amount of money you will get. So multiply it by the number of people you will bring. And then suddenly they started building a very huge auditorium. And they were they were filling the place. So you see, by the standards of men, ah, this is a, this is a big church. This is a good church. This this da, 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 da. and then or he will come on TV and be insulting all the fathers in the land. You put and you saw them. You put every father and you saw them. If I don't agree with what the father is saying, I will never insult him. That is that is this thing. It will shock you that. Pastor, you have been teaching us this. We have been learning this. And then we may meet a father in the land who does not even believe the things we preach. I will kneel down. He will, he will lay me. <laughs> because they have something. They have something. They have something. One day we will be learned in church. The father starts. Every father in your life is important. From your biological father. There are people, they will go to some churches and then they say, don't talk to your father again. Hey! Or because of church, you are not talking to your father. There are many people like that. Once he's asking, who is about it? See him. Ask my father. I don't want to even see his face. If I see him in my heart. Neji. So, they started building a huge auditorium. Hey! Tell him they had all the equipment. There was this car they would use. The car has LED light. Hey! And there was one car. They can open it like a stage. Tell him they had the money. They had the cash. But you see, ministry is not show business. It's not entertainment. That's why people left entertainment and became pastors overnight. <laughs> and where are they? Where are they? Somebody came and said they, are, they were actors. Suddenly they became pastors. It will mellow you. They are demons who tell you, who are you? <laughs> this work, there's no closing time. When you go to your workplace, it's 4 o'clock, you take your bag and you say, I'm signing out. Here, yeah, they don't sign out. You don't even sign in. <laughs> you don't sign in to sign out. Sometimes you are sleeping, you are sleeping. The Holy Ghost says, pray, pray, wake up and pray, wake up and pray. Wake up and pray, wake up and pray. There's something about to happen. Wake up and pray. You're like, ah, Charlie. Today I was telling you, remember that this sleep I slept this, this night and to me. Like, but if I try to sleep again, if you are me, me, sorry. <laughs> so you, you, it's not anything. It's in my heart. Let's go to church. <laughs> Let's go to church. So, tell him, eventually, eh, most of the people left him. Because you can't use money to sustain people. You can't use money to buy the trust of people. These things are proven over time. Now they'll be doing yes, 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 but something will come. You see, the, the money can't satisfy again. What you use, you have to now use something higher. 
That's why somebody may see some of the guys with me and say, Ah, does he pay you? <laughs> does he pay you to do these things? He said, No, he doesn't pay you. Hey, are you sure? <laughs> he brought many people out of the church. And Pastor Biodin Lawa came to church and said, don't, don't mind, just allow it. Allow it. If it's from God, it's a son. Just allow. You did what the huge building they, they went to do. They can't even fill a quarter of it. Because all the people have left. All the people they made branch pastors have stopped. They have all deserted their post and they have come. They are doing other things. One guy, one guy said, ah, now I've found Christ and I've found peace. At first I was living another life. I would just go and, and memorize scriptures and come and tell them. But now I thought, ah, I'm also growing. I'm also growing. I'm also growing. The former preached Christ from selfish ambition. Not sincerely. Supposing to add affliction to my chain. I told you one day, even Isaac shared the same thing with me that it happened to him. He, he, in fact, he did it. He, someone told him that submit the ministry, let's join our ministry and do. Then he did it. Okay, I believe it's all about Christ. <laughs> so let's all do it. Later he said, no, that's not my calling. As for me, somebody told me, earlier we said, give your ministry to me. I will make you a, a resident pastor and I'm going to pay you. I'm going to give you monthly stipend. I'm going to give you an official card. And you may look at it and say, hey, Charlie, it looks like this is an easy path. This is the easy part. I'm going to get a card. You are going to pull it. I'm going to get... Ah, everything will be sorted. Brains. I'm not having issues again. It's not to preach. I'm, I'm still preaching to people to bless them. <laughs> but it's not God's plan. So some do that out of what? Selfish ambition. Not sincerely. I to add affliction to my skin. Verse 17, please. But the latter out of love. Knowing that I am appointed for the defense of the gospel. Verse 18. What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is free. So the preaching should be about Jesus. In this I rejoice. Yes. And will rejoice. Our preaching ought to be about Jesus. Let's close. We'll continue next week. <laughs>